What up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna to be another practice vlog. If you like these type of videos, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another banger. Whenever I go to the range, there's always like two things that I have to look for. I gotta find good grass, number one, and I have to find a tight or a flat lie. Cause I mean, if you practice off a slope like 35 degrees this way or this way, for like an hour, you're doing more harm than good. So you want to generally find that flat lie. I'd say that's like way more important than finding just grass, is flat lies. We got a flat lie, a lot of grass. Today's gonna be a good day. Boom, check down the bag. Get a quick little glimpse of the bag, T. Come on now. It's a sexy ass bag right there. <laughs> All right, today's rain session is all about tempo. Everyone has different speeds, like in their golf swing, everyone has different swing speeds, but usually the good players have a relative three to one ratio uh, tempo when it comes to their golf swing. So meaning if your backswing is a second, your downswing is gonna be a third of that second. It is the glue to our golf swing. You could get away with a lot of bad stuff in your golf swing if you have a good tempo. So we're gonna do that today on the range. And we're gonna use the help from DWiz here. It's a swing monitor. It's not a launch monitor, so it tracks a lot of stuff in golf swing, from tempo to transition to backswing length to speed. Uh, we're just gonna focus on that three to one ratio considering that's what the elite players do. And we wanna make sure you guys are as elite as possible. And I'm trying to get ready for some of these tournaments coming up this summer. So I need to make, make sure that my tempo is pure. So let's go. What I'm doing is I'm pairing my wristband to, to the DWiz app right here. Selecting the club. Uh, right now I am hitting a eight iron. We're gonna take five swains, and it's gonna take the average of those five swains and give us our actual data. We're after that three to one ratio here, so meaning if your back swain's a second, and your down swain should be a third of that second. I'd pause for dramatic effect. Okay, my back swain was 0.8 seconds, down swain 0.3 seconds. So I had a 2.4 out of one ratio, so meaning my backswing was a little too quick, I think. So I needed that to be like a second in order for that downswing uh, three tenths of a second to actually make sense. So we're gonna work on trying to slow that back down a little bit. That's funny too, because Tyler, my brother, was telling me earlier that I actually do need to slow my freaking backswing down. So it's nice to have like the data match up to what like your coach or your friends are telling you too. Because you could be like, your buddy could be t telling you one thing and you're like, you have no idea if it's true or not because you don't have the data to back it up. But this way, you don't have to guess, you could actually measure it. So it's really, really cool. Swing number Point two. Eight seven. Okay, that was a little better. A little, I still need to have a slower backswing, believe it or not, that's crazy. That was 2.8 out of one. So we're after that three to one ratio. Our range, by the way, guys, <laughs> we're on the back range here and it's only like, what do you say, like 270? maybe less, 270 total. And people, for some reason, think that they could just bust driver. So we might get pelted here. I'm hearing a lot of drivers, make me really nervous. That one felt like, that Point backswing felt two. like I took forever. Okay, not bad, not bad. 3.1 out of one ratio, however, you determine, however you say that correctly. <laughs> three, three one. Three one to one. Wow. Fucking hell. Yeah. All right, that was the third swing, right? Yeah. Two more. Point eight seven. Oh, wow. Dude, whenever I work on my tempo, I hit it so much better. I don't know what it is. So perfect, three to one. That was a three to one ratio swing right there. That is what we're after. That is awesome. So as you guys could see, having this immediate feedback from the DWiz band right here helps a lot too. One more swing to get our five swings here. Point eight seven. I wonder if that recorded. Yeah, so that was a little quick. We'll end with one good one here. I feel like that Point was nine, my best three. one. We'll see. Let's see. Oh, and it's a perfect three to one ratio. Let's go. All right, now that we got those five swings, you could take that 
and learn from it. So you could turn on the learning stimuli within the DWIZ uh, that actually kind of corrects you within the swing and tells you if you're doing it right or if you're doing it wrong. So um, it could be funny, you'd be in your backswing and gives you a slight little buzz uh, in your wristband to let you know if it was too quick or too slow. We're after that three to one ratio and we got it on a couple occasions today on the range, so we're good. Now we're gonna head to the putting green and I'll show you guys the two other things that I wish I knew earlier when it came to the game of golf. So let's go, let's attack it. So when it comes to putting, there are two things that are absolutely crucial that I wish I knew about earlier. You gotta be able to start the ball online correctly. And you gotta match that speed up to that specific line. So in the golf world, there are literally thousands of training aids out there. I'm gonna show you guys like the really, really nice ones, right? To help you guys start the ball online correctly and have correct speed. But I'm also gonna show you how to ball on a budget here, which I'm sure you guys will appreciate because we're all trying to save a little bit of money. This game is, this game's expensive. All right, so this is what I'm talking about right here, guys. This is the ballin' on a budget golf training aid. And it's probably the best one that you're gonna find out there. You could find it at your local Home Depot or Lowe's, or I'm even gonna put it in the link in the description below. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a straightish putt on the practice putting green right here. And we're gonna place our aluminum yardstick where, I don't know if you guys can see right here, but there's a little hole at one end and there's no hole at the other end. So we're gonna put the no hole on the end so this is probably one of my favorite go-to drills to do when it comes to working on my starting line. So if I'm able to start the ball online within this first yard, let's say, then I know I'm gonna hit a pretty good putt end over end roll. So if it falls off to the left, that means I pulled it a little bit. If it falls off to the right, that means I pushed it a little bit. So as long as this ball goes in that hole, then I know I had a good stroke. So like that, that my face was a little bit open there. So that I would consider a push we want to try to have it go in this hole here. Bam, kind of like that. So, so I like to gamify everything that I do. So this is pretty hard, I'm not gonna lie. Normally I would say like, you, could, you should be able to make like 25 to 50 putts in a row from three feet, but this is no joke. So I like to tell anybody from like five to like 20 in a row, like 20 being the absolute most, like that is insane. So. For today's example, we'll try to do five in a row, um, just to kind of give you guys the idea, but obviously you can do as many as you want, just depending on your game and your situation that you're currently at. So let's make five in a row here, and we're not allowed to move on to the next drill until we complete this one. Let's be a little determined here, guys. Boom. I find too, like the tighter the stroke I have, the better my ball rolls. meaning like the length of backswing and follow through. If I can keep that as tight as possible, then I usually like start the ball on my intended line. I feel like that's especially good with these little short putts too. Like obviously you don't want like a short jabby stroke in your longer putts, but these shorter putts you can kind of get away with it. Oh, last one. And I don't care who you are guys. If you're on the PGA Tour, if you're trying to break a hundred, if you're on your last putt, no matter what, it is nerve wracking, let me tell you. Like, there's nothing really that resembles like on course pressure and emotions and feelings more than doing a drill kind of like this. Oh, all right, we are done, we are done. All right, now we are on to distance control with our putting. Like I said, again, we're gonna use the same exact tool. So this is really, really cool, be prepared. So all you need is your aluminum ruler right here. We're gonna place this right in the center of the green. Next, we need one tee and five golf balls right here. So we're gonna pace off a 30 footer. So all we gotta do now is get each of these balls within that yardage stick. And then we completed this drill. One hour later. All Feels good to complete a drill. Let's go. Let's freaking go. That's the video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything, make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell because we're popping out bangers every week. We'll see you next time, peace.